So let me show you real quick what prayer does. Prayer connects you to God. This is why you pray. You don't pray because it's a religious duty. You don't pray because if, if you don't, you'll no longer be saved. These are, we don't pray under stress. We pray because it's a privilege. And when we pray, it is our prayers that connect us to our God. And so that's why we pray. Not to prove anything to anybody else, not to have so many merit points throughout the week that at the end of a week or of a month or a year or of a lifetime, we've prayed enough to make it to heaven. That's not why we pray. We pray because your prayer connects you to God. And if you don't pray, you are not connected to God. Are you with me? So we pray to connect ourselves to God. Number two, fasting disconnects us from the world. Fasting is not meant to be a punishment. It is not meant to be something that is horrible and bad and that because we do it, it brings us closer to God. Are, are, y'all, are y'all here today? Fasting does one thing. It disconnects you from the world. The discipline of saying, I'm going to turn this meal down, I'm going to turn this program off, whatever your fasting is, the discipline of you doing that, it disconnects you from the world. And when you add the disconnection from the world and the connection to God, it opens up clarity that cannot come any other way. I'm going to say it again. There is a clarity that you get from God that is in prayer and fasting that you cannot get with fasting alone, that you cannot get with prayer alone, but that you can only get when you do the two together. Amen? Amen. Now, Pastor Rhoda earlier, she, she got into a story, because I don't talk to her about what I'm going to preach before I preach it, but she took one of my stories that I was going to talk to you about. But I'm, I'm going to say it again anyway, but I'm going to say it my way. Are, are y'all ready? So we're talking about clarity. My wife and I, we were driving our daughter, Kennedy, back to uh, Grand Canyon University, and I noticed in our family vehicle, the van, which is the primary a vehicle that she utilizes, there was a great de- great deal of shaking that was in the wheel when I went beyond a certain level. And I, I've driven, I've, I have driven cars for over 30 years. So I'm familiar, and I've driven some new ones, some leased ones, and some broke down ones. Right. Right. On. So I have good experience across the board. Yeah. I've driven some used ones, so I know the sounds that certain cars make. If it makes a certain sound, then I know this is happening. I know the, the smells. If you have a certain smell, it could be your antifreeze or the oil. Are y'all here? Yeah. There's certain things. But this was a sound, Pastor Terrence, that I'd never heard before. And, and, and in the midst of driving, I took it home. We got it home. And then once we got home, I went into prayer. I'm not a mechanic, but I do know God who can fix anything. Yeah. Come on in here, y'all. Y'all got to wake up in here today. I know y'all fasting. Y'all may be weak in your body, but wake up in here today. So I went and asked God, God, what is it? What, what is this? What should I do? And because I was fasting and praying, yeah, yeah. there was a clarity I had unlike any other time. And the Lord told me as clear as day, stop driving this car. And so that's exactly what we did. I asked my wife. We started driving my car, which is most, much smaller, and we all had to kind of get on top of each other to get in the car together. But we ain't unfamiliar with that. We used to have to do that growing up. Don't, don't get so, so, so far in life. You get so sedity that you forget how to walk. And you forget. Come on in here, y'all. You, you got to be able to know how to, how to live and to be in the good times and the bad times, the great times and the lean times. Amen? And so I was in the car, and I was, I was dealing with the car, and the Lord told me, don't drive the car anymore. 
Now, now I don't know about y'all, but I have a, uh, and and this is this is all part of the message, kind of. I hope so. I have a, uh, I have a uh, relationship with God where there are things that I ask Him for that if He could be so kind, if He would do these for me, I would greatly appreciate it. That I, as his servant, would appreciate if he would do this for me. He's God. He doesn't have to. So if he does it, I appreciate it. And one of the things I have before him, this is just me, that I have before God is that I've asked God, God, if any of our cars ever have to break down, let them only break down in my garage. That's it. This is my prayer. And God has been faithful to keep that prayer. There are times I've driven the car and it would go put, 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 get to the garage, right. Thank you, Jesus. and stop in the garage. Yes. Thank you, Lord, because it could have stopped 40 miles down the street. Are y'all here? Yes. There are times I've gone to the car to start it, living here in Arizona, and it wouldn't start. I didn't get mad. I said, God, thank you for keeping this request of mine. Yes, yes. And so for God to tell me, don't drive it no more. And because we are having this relationship, I knew to not drive anymore, so I didn't drive it. So to make a long story short, I didn't drive it. Then the Lord said, take it to this place. I took it to this place, and they came back, and they said, "Uh, sir, you don't understand. We have good relationship with people. He said, the the control arms that control your tires, that help your tires stay straight, he said they were totally cracked and rotted out. I said... Okay, he said it's going to cost, you know, quite a few dollars to get taken care of. I said, okay, uh, I don't have that today. Um, um, may not have that tomorrow or the day after. Uh, so uh, how, how long can I go before I really need to get this fixed? Because the, the, the and here's the interesting thing, which is why I love God, which is why you got to have a prayer life. I kept hearing a sound in my back tire. And that's why I took the car in. When I got there and they looked at it, they said, sir, there's nothing really wrong with your back tire. It just needs to be cleaned off. There was some dust between the brake and the rotor. That's what you were hearing. But good thing you brought it in for that because that's not the issue. The issue is your control arms up front on both sides. Are are y'all here? I said, well, how long can I go before I have to really have to really get this done? They say, well, you, uh, you, you, you need to have got this done like three, four weeks ago. I said, okay. I said, well, Lord, I need you to work this out. And he worked it out where we were able to do it, and the car is safe, and, and, and we're able to drive it. But as I reflect on it, as Pastor Rhoda did, I am thankful to God for him. Because I'm telling you, when I was driving to Phoenix, that car felt like it was finna fall apart. And I kept praying, God, just get me to the garage. Because this was he and I's uh, 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 agreement that he would just help us to get there. Are y'all here? He, listen, not only God, not only is God a provider, but he's a keeper. Because there's no reason other than the hand of God that our tires should not have fallen off while we were on the highway going 80 miles per hour. There's no reason why we shouldn't have been on the news about a van that flipped over on the highway other than the fact that because of God's keeping power and because of clarity that comes from prayer and fasting, he told us to park it and it saved our lives. Are y'all here today? So prayer is not this dutiful service. Prayer is this beautiful honor and relationship you have with the living God. It's not a task. It's it's a joy. Are you all here today? So what I want to talk to you about this morning in these last few minutes, I want to talk to you about a message that's entitled, I have decided to pray. Turn to somebody and say, I have decided to pray. Find somebody else and say, I have decided to pray. 
so there's some scriptures I'm going to take you through, and I want you to make sure that you are writing these scriptures down, that you are taking these with you back into your time of prayer, that you have this information so that you are able to be able to refer to it as your relationship with God in prayer is being developed. Matthew, first one, Matthew 6, chapter 7 through the 8th verse. <clears throat> I want you to see something here. And it's not going to take long. It's not going to take long, but it is going to be very strong. Matthew 6, 7, and 8. It says, and when you pray, <clears throat> do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Y'all see that? So the first thing I want to bring your attention to is the first few words of that scripture. It says, and when you pray. I want you to also notice what color are the letters in. Red. They're in red. For those of you, as you're beginning to read your Bible, if the letters are in red, it means these are words that Jesus spoke himself. It's not Paul or Peter or Matthew or anybody else. This is Jesus. Jesus spoke these words and he said, and when you pray, stop. So the first thing that you need to know about prayer is that it's not a question of if you do it. Because Jesus said, when you pray, he didn't, tell your, he didn't tell the disciples, and if you choose to pray, he didn't say, if you feel like praying, yeah. are you all here? Yeah. He said, and when, when you pray, prayer, when is a necessity. It is not a question of if you should do it. It's not something that's left up to the elite believers. Okay. It's not something, because I, I used to think this, where you can live a raggedy life, and when you get in trouble, reach out to the mother in the church and say, I need you to pray for me now, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in trouble, yeah, yeah. And, I need, I, and I need to get out of this. Yeah. Or you reach out to the person in your family that you know that pray, and you call them sniff, uh, sniffing, not sniffing, uh, <laughs> crying and sniffling. I don't want to say snotty because that's just sniffling, <laughs> sniffling. <laughs> and you call them all broken down because you need them to get a prayer through for you. Why? Because you don't believe that you're in a standing of relationship with God for God to hear you. And I want you to know this is not how prayer is supposed to be. He didn't say, and when the elite pray. Right. He didn't say, and when those who have been saved for 15 years pray. Right. He said, and when you pray. Right. If you are reading this, then you are the you. Right. Point your hand to your chest, say, I am the you. I am the you. So you have to pray. This is a privilege that every believer has. We have the privilege because of accepting Jesus Christ that we get to talk with God. Before we got saved, we couldn't talk with God. I want y'all to see this. We can only talk to God. And our to him was, save me, Jesus. That was the prayer that God heard that you can pray to him. Now that you are a believer, it's not just to, it's with. Do, do y'all see this? Watch this. Pastor Rhoda, come here real quick, because I don't know if y'all really see this. If, if, if she's standing here, and I want to talk to her, I'm talking to her. Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm talking to her. Are you here? And she, she may not know me. She may not want to pay me no attention. She may just say, well, move on, boy. She right. could just do a whole lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Are you here? Because right. I'm only talking to her right. or I'm talking at her. Are, are you all here? Yeah. But once, once I accept her invitation, once she says to me, hey, I want to give you an invitation, and I say, well, I accept that invitation. 
and now we have a relationship. Now it's not just me talking to her, it's me talking with her. So I'm going to say something, hey, how are you? I'm doing good, how are you? Oh, I hear you. (laughs) Because I'm not talking to, I'm talking with. Because I accepted her invitation, I am now able to talk with her, not just to her. Are y'all still here? So if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, you're only able to talk to God. But once you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, you're able to talk with God. You're able to say, God, I'm going through something right now, and I don't know what to do. And God will say to you, I know what you can do. Are you here? It is now a a conversation. It is now give and take. It is the privilege that we have with a living God that we're able to talk with him. And I think that we take this for granted. We take talking with God for granted. How do I know we take it for granted? Because we don't do it. We leave it up to other people to do it for us instead of us doing what he gave us the privilege to do with him. He wants to walk with you through the cool of the day like he did with Adam and Eve in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. He had never intended for man to not be able to walk with him, to be with him, to talk with him. And so what allows you to be with him is prayer. Prayer connects you to God. Are y'all still here? And fasting disconnects you from the world because God won't fool with sin. So when you approach him, you want to get all the sin out of your life because it helps you to clearly hear him better. I I can only explain it to you like this. There are times in my life that I deal with uh, uh, clogged clogged ears from from pressure and from other things that happen. And when my ears are clogged, I can't I can I can feel things, but I can't really hear like I want to hear. You can walk past me and say, hey, Pastor Jason, but if my ears are clogged and I walk right past you, it's not because I think I'm better than you. It's literally because I didn't hear you. Right. That's true. Are are y'all with me? That's true. But once my ears become unclogged, the thing that was stopping me from hearing is removed. The pressure is removed. Are y'all here? Then my ability to hear is clear. Because the thing that was a barrier to me hearing has been removed. The barrier to you hearing God is sin. And when you are fasting, you are removing the sin from your life because you're disconnecting from the world. You're removing the barriers that allows you to hear him clearer. The clarity that I have with God during times of prayer and fasting is absolutely beautiful. Are y'all here? And you can experience the same thing, but you have to be willing to say, I'm going to fast this. I'm going to let this go. I'm going to omit this meal. I'm going to let go of these brownies. It's a joke between her and I from Boot Camp Tuesday. I'm going to let go of what, whatever it is that you're telling me to do in this fasting so that I can disconnect from the world because, God, I got to hear you. If you're ever in a situation when you don't know what to do and you need to hear God clearly, turn your plate over and begin to pray during that meal. I promise you, you'll hear from God and you'll know what to do. Are y'all still here? So we now know that we have to pray. It is, a, it is a privilege to be able to talk to the living God. Right. Number two, then how do I pray? It's in the same scripture, Matthew 6, 7 through 8. He says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Number one, when you pray, write this down, be sincere. Don't use the repetitions of other people. That's why it's vain. Because it doesn't mean anything to you because it didn't come from you. When you talk to God, use your words. 
words. Talk to him like how you talk. If your talk is country, talk to God country. Don't come to God saying, God, how great thou art on this morning. I come to thee. That ain't how you talk. You are utilizing vain repetitions. You are repeating what you heard somebody else say. And God is saying to talk to me, you don't have to be somebody else. Just be you. Talk to me. If when you're talking to him, you're hurt, tell him I'm hurt. Don't come in all strong. God, you know, I got this handled. But, you know, if you could, if you don't mind, if you would please, stop. Because the second part of your praying when you pray is you got to do this. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask. The second thing that you do in prayer is that you are, you need to be transparent. Why do I need to be transparent? Because he already knows. You can't lie to God. You can't fool God. If you're talking to God, you might as well be transparent. So when you go to him and say, God, listen, I'm ticked today yeah, yeah, yeah. because this happened and I don't know how to respond to this. And God, I'm, God, I'm just telling you, between you and me, God, if she say one, one more thing, thing to me, <laughs> God, you're going to have to help me not roll up my sleeves, right. take off my earrings, and put on some Vaseline. Listen, knock her head off. Oh, yeah, that's street fight. Y'all yeah, know yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be transparent <laughs> to God. Why? Because he already knows. Yeah. If your heart is broken, tell him, God, my heart is broken. I don't know what to do right now. God, I don't even really feel like talking to you. To be honest, I'm going through so much right now. The pain is so deep. I just, I, I want to be left alone, but I know that's not the right, healthy place to be. So, Father, here I am. Broken. Messed up. Don't feel worthy. Want to quit and throw in the towel. But if I can just talk to you for a minute. Are y'all here? He needs you to be sincere and what? What's the last one? Transparent. Transparent. Because he already knows. If you go before God, because, and this is not on my notes, it just came up in my spirit. There are times when we go before God and we ask God for something and God doesn't give us what we're asking for. What, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that sometimes the thing that you're asking for is beyond your ability to understand at this moment why something will or will not be. But you have to still make it up in your mind that even if I am disappointed by the outcome of my prayer, I will still trust you. I won't stop praying because even if I don't get from you what I need I can still get from you excuse me if I don't get from you what I want I can still receive from you what I need you may not answer the specific request that I have but at least you'll be there to comfort me when it doesn't go the way that I planned are you here? Because praying to God is not you talking to a genie in a bottle where there are so many wishes that you get and that you are praying to get wishes to happen and for things to be restored. That's not what prayer is. Prayer with you, the creation, is the privilege to be able to talk to the creator. It's not you manipulating the creator to get what you want. Because he knows what's best. Because he has a view that's beyond the moment. He has a view that is eternal. And he knows exactly what he's doing. So the point of prayer is for you to get to know him more. And for you to learn more about you. Because you are talking to the one that created you. 
Prayer is not to be manipulated so that you can get what you want. Are you still here? Yeah. So then, how do I know that prayer works? Go to 1 John 5, 14 through 15. We're almost finished. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. And the scriptures are on the screen. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Do you all see that? So how do I know that prayer works? I know that prayer works because 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, God hears me. Prayer works because God hears me. That's how we know it works. Now, we're not talking about it working for you, for the thing that you want to get done. I'm talking about you knowing that it works. That the moment you as a believer speak to God, he hears you. Because this is the privilege that he gives to his children that have accepted him. Are you still here? So he hears you. I don't want you to go through life anymore ever questioning, did God hear me? It, d d listen, we know he sees you. Are y'all still here? Yeah. We know that God sees you. But it's different to know that you're heard. Because for some people, to be heard lets them know that they're seen. Because you can see me and not hear me, and I think that you missed me. But if you hear me, then I know that I'm seen. So the fact that God can hear you knows, lets you know that you are not just heard, but that you are seen. Are, are y'all here today? This is the privilege of prayer, and this is how we know that prayer works, that when we talk to our God, he hears us. So then, if he hears us, and I'm almost finished, what then do I pray? If I'm talking to God and he hears me, I'm talking to God and I'm to be sincere and transparent, and God hears me then what is it that I'm supposed to pray? It's right here in 1 John 5, 14 again. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. There's the caveat. He hears you if what you're asking is according to his will. But if what you're asking it's not according to his will, he don't hear you. In other words, God is saying, you can miss me with that. Are you all here? Because he is not responsible to respond to your word. He's responsible to respond to your word when your word is his word. So if you're going to God saying, God, Ooh, I want to get married, and that lady over there, she looked like the one that's perfect for me. God, I think it would be a perfect match. I know she's married right now, but God, I know you can fix it. Fix it, God. Let... That's not a word he hears, because that's not according to his will. Are y'all here today? What then is God's will? <laughs> How do we know God's will. Is this something that's up in the air, that's untouchable, unreliable, unfathomable, that we can't get to, that we can't see, that we can't really know or understand? So we need a priest or a preacher to decipher it for us. Is this the will of God? No. The will of God is very plain and simple. Write this down so you'll never forget it. The will of God is his word. Because his word is his will. If, if, if I am, whoo, I, whoo, if I am at the end of my life and if I'm getting ready to pass away, I leave a will to give instructions on what is to be done after I'm gone. 
because my will is my last word and testament. The will is my word because the word is written, which becomes my will. So God's will for your life is his word that he left on record so you will be able to know how to act and behave after Jesus left. Are you here? So if you don't know what God's will is for this situation, get in his word. Well, pastor, there's so many. It's just so many books in the Bible. It's just so many scriptures, so many letters. Where do I even begin? Take your smart self to Google. So you don't have, we, listen, you don't have the issues that I had growing up. I didn't have a, yeah, I'm that old, but I didn't have a computer growing up. We had books and concordances and dictionaries and and encyclopedias. Are you here? Shut up. I mean, be, I mean, ooh, I'm, I'm streaming. I, that's why I didn't want to stream because sometimes, hush. <laughs> but you can Google it. Get on your computer and Google since you Google everything else. Let me get closer because I ain't afraid of y'all. Because you Google everything else. You Google where is the best Mexican restaurant? Where can I get the best tacos? Where should I not live? Where does he live? What's on sale? We Google everything else. Google, what do I say to her when I want her to be quiet? Scriptures. And Google will pull up scriptures, God's word, his will, to let you know how to deal with talkative people. And I want to help you with something. 9.5 times out of 10, the answer in God's word regarding his will is something to fix you, not for you to fix somebody else. He's not going to tell you in his word, go over to her house. He's not going to tell you that. In his word, he's going to tell you, get on your face. (laughs) Are y'all here? Because his word and his will is to address you. His word and his will is not for you to go address somebody else. Are you here? If you're having trouble in your marriage, I've Googled, how do I, and I ain't saying it because it ain't none of your business, but how do I do this? And it pulled it up. It Google it until you can get a Rolodex in your own heart and mind to be able to know what God's word is saying to you. Get a Bible. It blows me away the amount of people that don't have a Bible. They say, well, I have it on my phone. That's cool. But get something that's on paper. What if your, I'm not trying to be the old man saying get off my grass, but what if your computer or phone stops working? Your Bible with the pages won't stop working. My Bible, I could see when I was going through something because I highlighted everything that was on that page. I could see the pages where I cried and snotted because I don't know the other words, sniffling. I did that all over the page because that page is a little, it's not as flat as the other ones are. Are you here? My Bible gives me a history of my life, of my walk, of my journey with my God of how he gave me word to help me get through that situation. Are you here today? So this is what we pray. We pray his word. But you can't pray what you don't know. And so what you end up praying are your emotions. And God is not, uh, 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 what do I want to, how do I want to say this, Lord? God does not have to acquiesce to your emotions. He only has to acquiesce to his word. God, I'm sick of this. Get me out of this. Where is that in the word? Find it in the word. Then you can pray that word, which is his will. Then he'll hear it. 
which is why it hasn't changed. Because he hasn't heard that because you've been praying your emotions instead of his word. Maybe the word is, God, tell me what I'm supposed to be doing here. God, you opened this door, but I know from your word that when you open doors, it is for me to walk through them to declare your name. God, have I not declared your name enough? Who else should I be talking to? God, tell me in my prayer time. Tell me in my sleep. Drop a person's name in my heart so I know who I'm supposed to go talk to and minister to. That's the type of prayer that God says. I heard that. And I'll respond to that, and I'll move on that, because what you're praying isn't selfish-based. What you're praying is about my will, because you got it from my word. When you don't know what to do, and you're going through, and all of us have been there, and you can't get to Google, or you can't look up something, call a family member of this church, because we're all family. Call somebody that knows God and says, listen, I'm going through something and I want to pray about this, but I don't have any word. Tell me, do you, have you experienced this? Or is there any word coming up in your heart that you can give me that I can then take into prayer? I guarantee you, you'll find somebody in this family who'll be able to say, yeah, I know a word for that. And I promise you that before you get off the phone with them, not only will they give you the word, but they will then say, you know what? Let me pray with you. Because you're not looking for them to pray for you because you're not doing it. You're looking for them to pray with you as you are doing it. Are you all here today? I want to show you this last scripture, then I think I'm done. Jeremiah 1 and 12. And it's from the English Standard Version. And it connects with what we just said in 1 John 5, 14. It says here, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. So God is watching and waiting for somebody to pray his word. He is looking and waiting for somebody to pray his word because that's where he's going to show up and perform. And the reason you haven't seen a performance of God in your life is because there has been no word for him to show up to perform. It didn't say your word he performs. It says his word he performs. So you have got to begin to have a life that is in the word of God. Pastor, this is my first time being saved. I don't know where to start. I'm glad you said that. Go to the book of John and read the book of John. It's about God's love for humanity. First, find out from his word how much he loves you. Because when you realize how much he loves you, then nothing else matters. Are you all here today? Find his word because he watches for his word to perform it. I want you to consider that there may be something in your life that could have been moved a long time ago that it hasn't been because God's been waiting for you to find the right word to put on it. Because he doesn't perform because you have a situation. He doesn't perform because you have a circumstance. He doesn't perform because you're going through he performs because you put word on it. Amen. So the next time you say, man, I'm going through something, my question to you will be, well, what word have you put on it? I'm dealing with something I just don't know what to do. I got you, but what word have you put on it? Because God only shows up to perform his what? Word. His word, not your word. Are you still with me? On the tables that you're sitting at, and for those of you that are watching us online, stay with me, I want to give you some instructions. But for those of you that are sitting at tables, you notice there are red containers on your table. And there's something specific that I want you to do with the red containers. There's also uh, note cards, and there's also some pens. I want you to, in a few moments, we're going to play, play a little bit of worship music, and in a few moments, I want you to be able to write down on that note card your prayer request. 
And I'm going to show you from Scripture why it's important. Now, listen, when you write this down, do not include any names. Don't include your name and don't include the name of the person that you may want us to pray about. For example, don't say, my name is Teresa, and I'm praying for my knucklehead son, Johnny. I need y'all to help pray for me, because if he say and do one more thing, that's not what we want. We want you to say, I have a prayer request for my son, and I'm looking for God to do such and such. The reason why we don't want you to put your name on it it's because after you're done writing their prayer request, I want you to take those three by five cards that your request is on, and I want you to put it in the red container. We're then going to come around and collect the red containers, and then our pastors who are responsible for prayer, they will be praying over your request this week. And then on Sunday, when you come back to church, there will be tables set up across the front. I hope somebody is getting this. Tables set up across the front with those prayer request cards laid out on the tables. For you to then come and grab a couple of cards during our time of prayer and for you to walk this place and start learning how to pray for somebody else. And then when you get done praying for that card, you bring it back to the table and put it back on the table. I want you to see in action how you responding to pray for somebody else and to ask somebody to pray for you, how God is going to respond to your request. Are y'all here today? I'm going to show you the scripture. Look up, look up. I know you're writing, but look up because I want you to see I didn't just make this up. It's from his word. Go to Philippians, the fourth chapter, the B part of verse 5 and verse 6, and it's on the screen. Do you see it? Do you see it? The first, the second part of the fifth scripture says, the Lord is at hand. So the first thing I want you to know is that he's near you. He's at hand. He's not far away. He's close to you. Don't think you got to summon God to come to you. You are walking with you. He is at hand. Do you all hear me? So let, let me stop again because y'all still riding. Stop riding. Everybody stop riding. Online, stop riding or texting. Look up and look at pastor because I want you to hear what I'm saying because when this moment is over, you have to have word. Not just what you thought I said. You got to have word. You need to know the Lord is at hand. What that means is that he is close to you. He is near you. He's not far from you. He's not in a galaxy far away. He's not over in Asia, but not available in America. He is at hand. And because he is at hand, the scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So what you're doing in a few moments is making your requests known to God. You're writing it down. When you write it down, it becomes real. It becomes serious. It becomes an expression of your heart. Are you all here today? And this is what you should be doing. In your times of prayer, you should have a prayer journal where you're writing down your prayer requests that you're letting it be known to God. Are you all here? So that you can see when I asked and when he did it. Or when I asked and he then changed my heart or my attitude about what I asked. Are you here with me? So with that in mind, now write. Take this moment. Write a request on that three by five note card. Don't reveal names, but reveal your prayer request. And when you're done, put that prayer request in the container. If you're watching us live, what we would ask you to do right now is that you would go on your tablet, on your computer, on your phone, 
and let our online pastor know what your request is. And our online pastor will schedule time to either connect with you in prayer or to take your request and then to bring them to our prayer pastors as they pray over them this week during this time of 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you're hearing us online because you couldn't come this morning and you're watching us live, I don't want you to think that you're not involved in this. You are part of this. Put your prayer requests. We have an online pastor to serve you and to make sure that you feel a part of what we're doing. Take 30 more seconds, and then we're going to collect the containers. Take 30 more seconds, and then we're going to collect the containers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too difficult. pick up the prayer request we're going to pick up the pick up the containers with the prayer request and we're going to watch God do something great in your life in my life and all of our lives why because when you pray God hears us why because how you pray shows God that you are being sincere and that you are being transparent and we've learned today that when we pray, we pray his word. Because when we put his word on it, his word is the thing that he watches over to perform. God will always do what he said. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this word today. I want to thank you for this 21 days of prayer and fasting. I thank you for the relationships that are being made stronger. I want to thank you for the disciplines that are being made better. Thank you for the difficult times and the hard times and the good times and the beautiful times. Thank you for the times and the moments of clarity that we have to know exactly what to do and when to do and how to do it. Thank you, God, that because of this time, we walk away knowing that you are always faithful, that you are always on time, and you will always do what you promise. Father, we love you today, and we appreciate you. God, I pray that for every person hearing this word, whether they are here on this campus or whether they are watching us live across the world, Father, I pray that if they need to know you, that they want to get to a place in their life where they're not just talking to you, but they want to talk with you. That right now, God, that they are lifting their hands and lifting their hearts and that they are saying to you that they want to be saved. Whether here on this campus or whether online, you can hit the hand button and you can say, I want to give my life to Christ. Father, I pray for every person that has their hand lifted and has their heart lifted and is saying to you today, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Father, I thank you that you don't make it difficult. And I thank you that because of this moment that they are now saved. Father, I pray that you would get them into a life-giving church, a church that preaches and teaches your word unapologetically. And I thank you, God, for the transformation and for the change and that their life now because of this decision will be better. We give you praise, God. In the master's name of Jesus Christ, let all God's people say amen. If you were blessed by this word, put your hands together right now and let's give our God a great praise. Come on, lift your praise, lift your worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Incredible time. 
Thank you so much again for joining us here at CFFC. In addition to that, we'd love to further connect with you throughout the week. So if you haven't already, connect with a small group by visiting our website at cffc.org slash small groups. We can't wait to see you this week.